Here's the engine oil pan. Uh, all these bolts gotta come off. Showing you all the locations. This transmission cooler line, this hard line right here, is blocking three of the oil pan bolts. Let me see if I can get a light on that. Yeah, those three behind there. Uh, which means you're gonna have to lower it. That's the rest of the bolts. Luckily, that hard line is connected to a soft line going to the transmit or the radiator right there. So I'm hoping a combination of undoing the bolts holding it to the pan, um, as well as lifting the engine up, should give me clearance to get a wrench on those bolts or something. Worst case scenario, I have to disconnect it. Um, I have transmission fluid to... might just do a full transmission service because I have the parts, but hopefully I can get away with just the lifting the engine. To do that, I'm going to undo the motor mount bolts. I believe these are 17 mil. Um, one on each side, there's this one, and then other side, this one, so we'll see. Alright, quick rundown of the setup, got the engine hoist, had to pull this belt off just a little bit in order to access the bolts for the secondary air compressor, um, had to pull that off so I could put a bolt through the front engine um, lift point, got a heavy duty chain. Um, Two motor mount bolts on the bottom side of the subframe are disconnected and lifted the engine up about like three, four inches. Cool. So what I ended up doing is that that transmission cooler line just disconnected it from the transmission. It was easier that way. It's a banjo bolt and it was able to shimmy it out of the way. So here it is down here, resting on the subframe. And that gave me, gave me space for those three bolts there using a 3 8 drive u-joint adapter and an e10 um, you could probably get away with doing a quarter inch drive e10 u-joint socket where the socket is the u-joint i don't have one on hand so did the hard way but yeah let's pull this pan off cool finally got the pan off um it's a little difficult once you remove all the bolts there's no gasket separate gasket it's just like black rtv all the way around so it does get stuck the oil pan has these little standoff provisions right here it's for the like hangers these things um what you could get, do is get a similar bolt same thread pitch um i use the one off of the secondary air compressor because it's slightly longer um this one it's a torx bit slightly longer than the oil pan bolts and if you thread it into those standoffs it'll push against the block and so that'll pop up start popping off the oil pan enough for you to put a screwdriver back there and pry it off so now that the pan is off here's the oil pickup tube right here it does kind of a snaky bit around the back here and then swoops up there so there's one bolt there holding it in um i don't see any other ones so the ring we got to change is in there all right, I lied. There's actually two bolts on the oil pickup tube. There was one here, and then there's another one at the top of the tube. Right here. You can see a little head of it. Touching it right there. They're both E10s. And you're also going to have to remove this little oil sensor assembly here too, so you can pivot the uh, oil pickup tube this way, down, and then be able to snake that out. So, gotta take off these two bolts, I think. And then they should be able to swing out the way. All right, got the pickup tube out of the car. We're here on the bench now. You can see the O-ring here. Let me focus on that. Anyways, it's basically completely flat. You can see how it's almost flush with the tube. It's not doing much sealing anymore. This is probably the original one. The car's at 146,000 miles. I'm gonna be replacing it with brand new one. Here's the part number. Got it from FCP Euro. I'll drop a link in the description. All right, here's a comparison of the original versus the new one. Uh, the original one actually cracked as I was pulling it out. Super brutal. New one. So this is a surprise. I'm scraping away all the old gasket material to put on new RTV. I found these floating in the pan. This one is more concerning. 
think that's a bit of the timing chain guide, given the color. These are all just sitting in the bottom of the pan. This isn't magnetic. It's, I think it's rubber. I don't know if it's also art, like hardened RTV, but it's really hard. It's way harder than the stuff that I'm scraping off. That This piece is a little bit pliable. But it's not magnetic. If I take a magnet to it. Yeah, it's not metal, so that's good. But uh, let's take a look at the timing chain guide if I could see it from the oil pan side. See if there's anything obviously missing, but um, hopefully it's nothing serious. Let me know in the comments if it's something I should worry about. All right, so on top of uh, scraping old gasket material being such a shitty job, um, my pan was on here was stuck on the block so bad that when I threaded the bolts in to pop it off it actually warped the pan i don't know if you can see that here's the little stud that i was talking about you thread the longer bolt there so it pushes against the block and pops the pan off but in doing so the rtv was on there so good that it actually warped the pan right here um it doesn't look like it affected the inner lip which is probably the most important part um if you're gonna take on this job, I would suggest being being ready with a, a brand new pan, so you don't have to spend time scraping off material, and you don't run into this issue. Um, I'm gonna run it just because I don't have another pan right now. Um, if I find that it leaks, I'll just order a new pan and throw that in. But something to be aware of. Here's the new O-ring installed on the pickup tube. Let's see how the O-ring is sitting proud of the uh, the rest of the tube that's how it should be so hopefully that seals up hopefully we get oil pressure idle to stop the ridiculous knocking sound like a diesel um, so hope that's it We got everything pretty much all back together. Uh, car's back on the ground. I don't know if you could tell in the last clip, but on cold start, there was no more uh, rattle a couple seconds into the start, so that's a good thing. Oil pickup tube o-ring was the cause of that one. However, once the car is warm and the idle drops down to 800 RPM, the very noticeable like rhythmic metallic tapping noise is still there, um, and that's present all the way up until like 1200 RPM when the engine's just too loud. Um, I don't know if it's still there, it doesn't sound like it after 1200 RPM, but either way, I have a sneaking suspicion it'll be the timing chain tensioners. Um, they're getting stuck and not putting enough tension on the timing chain. That would explain why it kind of disappears after 1200 RPM. But if you guys have any other suggestions on the, fixing that noise for the M272, uh, leave them down in the comments. If you like the video, let me know, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.